my channel, my friends. Today, I wanna go through my workouts this week in delicious detail. I wanna take you through my workout split, the exercises that I chose, and some of the technique cues that I focus on to really squeeze the most out of the movements, you know? And then how I think about sets, reps, rest times, the juicy stuff. Just a couple of things before we start. This is how I trained this week specifically. Every week is different, you know? Obviously I've got my staple moves, I'll feature them often, but my total training time, my split, the exercises I choose, those all vary week to week. The whole point of my workouts is to make me feel happy, okay? They work for me, I don't work for them. I'm the boss here. So each week I'll try and incorporate a little bit of what will make me feel happy that week. Also, I wanted to share how I work out, just to share some ideas, you know? There might be something in there that you bring into your own routine and you love it, but that doesn't mean that this is how you should work out at all. We all enjoy moving in different ways, we have different priorities, different goals, so if you're already following something that makes you feel good, then you're already doing great. So let's start off with my split this week. I went for four workouts and they were each about one hour long and I'd say that's a pretty average week for me. Like 50 to 60% of the time, I'm hitting that, you know? But then some weeks, just, just feels like a bit much. Maybe I'm busy, maybe I'm chilling, maybe I'm busy chilling. In times like those, I would tend to just drop it to about three sessions a week. But then at the same time, some weeks I'm just like, wow, I'm feeling really good. I've got a lot of energy, my calendar's open, I've got time, I'm walking on sunshine, the world is my oyster. You know what, maybe I will. Maybe I will add in that fifth session. I'm not on a strict prescription. My doctor ain't here, I can't see him. <laughs> Life happens. My period happens, me going to bed late sometimes happens, me walking on sunshine, it happens. So I just try and be really intuitive with my training volume and my training intensity week on week. I get comments sometimes saying, wait, what? Four hours a week? I can't, it can't be right. I swear you train hours a day. And let me just say, <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> I don't, I have trained that way in the past when I was a competitive athlete and I would do it again if the challenge so required, you know, if I wanted to break a world record, but that is not even close to my day-to-day -day life. Also, four, sometimes five hours a week is actually a lot. If you really deepen your understanding of the sports science and biomechanics, and you go into each of your sessions feeling well-rested and well-fueled, one hour of training can yield totally different results based on each of these things. It's a little bit like when you're studying or working. Sometimes you can get more done in a single hour than you would in the entire day on Sundays. And so I think it's less about the amount of time that you've committed to fitness and more about the effective use of time. So in terms of what I focused on, my sessions were for workout one, dynamic, full body. I really focused on explosive movements and working on power. And then for workout number two, I did an upper body session. I primarily worked on my strength, some stabilization, and I always have to get some core work in there as well. And then for my third workout, it was my lower body day, which is slower than my dynamic day. And it featured Mario, so it's obviously gonna be my favorite day. And then my fourth workout was a second full body session. This is more strength and skill focused, so a lot less dynamic than my first workout. Also, one of the three rest days would probably classify it as an active rest day. Nothing intense, it was very chill, and I just included it to really give you guys a feel of all of the movement I did in this week. And in terms of my goals, they're back to where they were back in the day. You know, before COVID, before my injury, before my rehab, a long, long time ago, <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. I'm just back to focusing on nothing. My goal is to be so well-rounded, I make circles look like squares. <laughs> That's my goal. I wanna be a jack of all trades, a master of none. I'm training to be ready for the zombie apocalypse and also sport. In the last couple of months, I've tried sprints with Nevin, I've done ultra running, I'm trying to get my one arm press ups back and I wanna get back into gymnastics as well because I love it. After my injury, I thought I wouldn't get the chance to explore again but I really wanna explore what my body can do and just be ready to say yes to anything. But I do just wanna say that rounded training like this isn't the most effective way to achieve a particular goal. 
If you have a particular goal in mind, it's really important to be specific. And that means tailoring all of the training parameters for that goal to achieve the best results. And that's partly why I say that my workouts aren't right, they're just mine. Before we go into it, if you do like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already joined this incredible, uh, incredible group of people I'm lucky to call my friends. All right, so it's workout number one, dynamic full body. It's my first workout of the week. I've had two rest days. My sleep has been baby-like, baby-esque, and now it's Monday morning, and you know what? I'm ready for business. In my dynamic full body days, the goal isn't to go heavy. It's more about movement at speed, really prioritizing those fast twitch muscle fibers and shifting the focus across my body throughout the workout so that I don't fatigue and I can actually get close to my power output threshold in each move. So for example, I'd never put all of my lower body movements in this workout back to back. So I started this workout off with some single arm dumbbell snatches, which I really feel activating my glutes, quads, hamstrings, core, some lats, shoulders, and triceps. It's basically everything. In general, for these power movements, I end my sets when I notice that I can't maintain the same speed, either because I need more rest between each rep, or I'm just not exploding quickly enough in the rep. So I think of failure differently here compared to when we're training more hypertrophy style or strength style where we would typically fail mid rep or our form would break down. Here we're not waiting until we fail mid rep. I'm really just looking for speed slowdown. And that's the end of my set. Typically with the weight I choose, that puts me somewhere in the eight to 15 rep range, but I'm not really counting. With this move, the goal is really to explode up from the legs and to start that upwards pull from the upper body early so that there's only one continuous motion of the dumbbell up to the sky. If you haven't done these before, you can practice the rhythm with no weight at all, but they're so worth learning. Next up, I went for alternating landmine thrusters. Again, it's full body, but I'm squatting with full range of motion and I'm adding some more weight. I'm gonna show you guys a full set here so you guys can really see how I start off nice and fast and then bit by bit, the reps are taking me longer, I'm taking more rest time between the reps and I'm exploding slower. And that's when I know that I need to stop. Now my legs and push muscles need a little bit of rest. If I went for another move focusing on legs, my rate of perceived exertion would be super high, but my actual power output would be low, and that's not what I want. So I move on to a pull muscle group, and I'm doing standing rotational rows on the cable. In terms of the rest times, my priority is always high quality sets with great form and high power output. I feel like it's really easy to get tempted into minimizing those rest times, thinking that more work time is better, but I don't train that way. If I had to guess, for dynamic movements, I'm probably hitting about one to two minutes rest between each set. Sometimes it's more. Then I hit my squat hold chest throws. We've got an isometric hold for my legs and my core. Everything from the chest down is stabilized. It's locked in, it ain't moving. Meanwhile, everything from the chest up is going absolutely wild. Now these alternating dumbbell cleans are another amazing low impact explosive movement. You can add a heel tap, I showed that on Instagram. Here, the drive should really be coming from our legs and glutes, and that bicep is only activated to stabilize. And I like alternating sides, we're adding that point of instability in the handover, and it also reminds me of Newton's cradle, so. And then I went for two slower pulling movements, just to catch my breath a little, you know? I just needed it. So to hit my whole back, I went for cable good mornings to row, and then an X pull down. These aren't really dynamic, but they gave me a bit of recovery time for the final move. Help. It's also a really tough isometric hold. <laughs> <laughs> this are you, is my magic Oh, you want trick. help, sorry. So after five to 10 minutes of slowing down the pace a bit, I'm ready for my final explosive movement, which is a kneeling squat jump to box jump. 
At this point in the session, I'm obviously not gonna get full power output, but both the kneeling squat jump and the box jumps have a minimum power requirement to actually complete the movement. I need to jump high enough to actually clear the box. I need to jump high enough to actually bring my feet from under my knees. By providing a minimum threshold, they're really helpful at the end of a session when my motivation starts to drop and I subconsciously start preserving energy, but also for giving me a sense of what my power output levels are independent of my perceived exertion. The best thing about this move is how it makes your hair look. <laughs> is it? That's the tutorial for this hair, by the way. I take my post-workout nutrition very seriously. I kind of want to try yours as well, though. <laughs> okay, you can try mine. I try. I take Mario's post-workout nutrition oh. also very seriously. Are you trying mine on my behalf? Yeah. Checking it's good sure enough. It's, just to make sure it's good enough, you know. Okay, thank you. What are your rest times? No rest. <laughs> to failure. <laughs> to completion. Moment to failure. Yeah. Okay, got you. Rate of perceived digestion. <laughs> Now we're moving on to workout number two. It's an upper body session. I definitely went through a phase for about two years where I was just like, I just wasn't feeling the upper body workouts, you know? But now, I don't know, they've climbed the ranks. They might even be number one. But I'm starting them off with pull-ups. First of all, I just love the feel of a pull-up. And secondly, it's just such a compound move that it makes it so amazing to track your progressive overload in terms of muscular endurance and strength. And we've spoken about how progressive overload is really valuable. That means pushing for improvements in strength, improvements in form, rep capacity as well. But I think like any useful concept, sometimes people can get really carried away with trying to apply it to everything and they fall into repeating the same movements over and over and over. I personally don't do that. I like to monitor my development in a handful of compound movements and pull-ups are one of those for my upper body. So we've got pull-ups first. That's because I'm feeling fresh so we get a really clear picture of my development. And now that I'm back to about 11 body weight pull-ups, I'm adding weight so that I can really focus on strength rather than adding endurance. So here I went to four sets of 10 kilos, which is about 22 pounds to failure. It's only about two reps, it's not many. These sets of two are killing me. <laughs> They're the hardest sets though. I'm like dead after one. Always with the chalk. It was full at the start. And then after my fourth set, I dropped that down to five kilos or 11 pounds for one set and then I dropped down to body weight. And my rest times here are healthy. We're talking two minutes plus to really allow my strength capacity to recover. Those pull-ups killed me. <laughs> Next up we've got bench press. Now I'm not known to bench press. <laughs> I willingly admitted that I didn't bench press. But after seeing Nevin Harrison, I'm a new woman. I'm changed. I really just picked a weight that allowed me to do about four sets at around five to eight reps. From there, I moved on to weighted push-ups, which I personally find so much easier. I ended up doing a couple of drop sets. So I started off with 10 kilos, went to failure, and then down to body weight, close to failure, to pack in lots more volume. My first couple of movements, so pull-ups and bench press, were lower rep ranges with longer rest times. So here I'm going for higher rep counts and reducing my rest times to somewhere around one to one and a half minutes. And then I went into some handstand shoulder taps. So shifting to an overhead movement. Shoulder health is super important, so I try to incorporate something like this regularly. But if the handstand position is a little bit intimidating for you right now, you can always try it in the pipe position. I'm gonna do a pipe move in a bit, so you guys will see it in a second. From there, I switched back to a pull movement, but this time at speed. Since everything else in this session has been quite slow, and I also picked a unilateral movement so that I could really hone in on my slightly weaker side, which is my left side. I went for tempo unilateral mowers. I go quickly on the concentric phase and slowly in the eccentric phase. You guys might remember this move from when I trained with Nevin. Next up, I move on to some pike push-ups. I love these, I love pressing in the overhead position. My goal one day is to be able to do a handstand press. That's my goal, and this is where we start. And this is also the position that I was talking about earlier if you didn't wanna do the handstands. 
Then I wanted to bring in some core work and some anti-rotation work, which I hadn't yet done in the workout. So I went to do some half kneeling anti-rotation cable press, which is such a mouthful. I don't even try saying that at two times speed. Half kneeling anti-rotation cable press. All right. In this move, I'm extending while keeping my hips and torso facing straight ahead. The goal is zero rotation. To finish off, I just wanted to test out a few sets of dips. To be honest, I just saw the bars free and I was like, oh, go on then. My chest and triceps were a bit tired, so that's why my form wasn't tip top, but I hadn't done that movement for a while and I just really wanted to bring that movement pattern in. And that's workout two done. In the books, tick it off. Bone dry, bone dry, not a single ounce of sweat right there. There would have been a time in the past where I'd have thought that was a bad workout because I was literally just looking to have sweaty workouts. So that was a beadless workout. Zero beads given. <laughs> Sometimes I think, are my jokes funny or do they just make me laugh? <laughs> and then I think it's irrelevant because as long as I laugh, exactly. it's all good. Now the next day was a rest day. I felt like I had two really great sessions. I felt really strong and I don't want to wait until I badly need a rest day to take one. So I took it off. I did some work. I rested in the evening. I watched Forgetting Sarah Marshall, read a book and it was just a great day. Okay, it's a walk on number three. So you can really make anything rhyme. You just have to change, change the word and how it actually sounds. Just use a completely different word. So, it's workout number three, it's my lower body day. Now in my lower body days, I like to focus more on hypertrophy using a much heavier weight than I would for my lower body exercises in my full body days. That makes sense? But the most important thing is that I recruited myself for Mario. So I started off with my heaviest movement, as usual. You know, I've got to show Mario, I've got to set the bar, you know? Tell him how it's gonna be in this session. So we start off with alternating reverse lunges. So 80 kilos, Yeah. that's what, 1.3 times what you weigh? More than 1.3 times what you I weigh? Think about any of and you stuff. lunged it, and how many reps do you do? Like 12, five, like five sets of 12. <sighs> this is the one exercise where me and Mario can both lift this weight. Oh, we have a similar yeah. working weight. Yeah, I think that's why I love working out with you. And this always doing lunges. So yeah. Again, just like the pull-ups, this is where I keep an eye on my progressive overload, where I'm watching how heavy I'm lifting, how my form is, what my rep capacity is, and how that's all developing with time. And then I basically just flipped that 180. So we've had the slow, controlled, heavy movement. I just quickly hit it with a jumping Bulgarian split squat. This was only for two sets per side, but we're going for about 10 to 15 reps until I felt that that power was just <laughs> leaving my body. After that, I switched over to single arm dumbbell stiff leg deadlift. I went for four sets and I switched between left and right each set. I'm personally very hamstring dominant. My hamstrings just, they love to get involved. I don't ask them to, they just invite themselves whenever they want. So in the past, I've kind of really deprioritized my hamstring work to prioritize quads and glutes because they don't develop as well. But lately I've been trying to restore a little bit more balance to the universe. So I have been doing a little bit more hamstring work. I personally love to do these unilaterally loaded. You don't have to, it's just my personal preference. Next, I went for open leg walking lunges. Mario was kind of new to these, so we took him nice and slow, but I think he kind of killed it to be fair. You really wanna open up that back leg and come onto your toes to stop it from contributing to the lift. All of the weight, 90% of the weight, should be going through that front leg. And then I move on to hip thrusts and I like to use a resistance band just below my knees to really keep my glutes fully engaged. And I also drop the weight. In the past, I used to lift 150 kilos, sometimes 200 kilos on a good day, but I find that the heavier and heavier I go, the harder it is for me to actually isolate my glutes. And so I just drop the weight and I increase the amount of reps and I feel like I can focus on my glutes so much more. Usually I manipulate my tempo quite a lot. So I like to go really slow on the way down and then quickly drive up. I didn't really do that this week, but I did superset with resistance band hip abduction. And then I rest once the abductions are done. So that I could keep that glute engagement, I also kept the resistance band around my legs for my leg press. My foot placement was just slightly wider than shoulder width apart. I know loads of people like to manipulate the leg press. I like to keep it vanilla. 
or at least I did for this workout. I kept it nice and vanilla and PG. I didn't get too sexy with it, you know? It's not competition. I know it's not, but it so stop lunches. making it one. <laughs> <laughs> to finish it off, because a lot of the moves were nice and slow and controlled, I just wanted to finish off with a little bit of speed, need for speed. So I ended up doing some sled sprints slash sled runs, it wasn't like a full sprint. But I really drive the knees up high with a long stride and press all the way down to full extension. And can I just say, these are absolutely demolishing. Like my work to rest ratio is highly skewed. It takes 10 seconds of work and then I'm dead for a few minutes. So out of breath. And that was it. That was a very successful lower body day. Great work. <laughs> well done. You smashed that. That was fun. That was a session that only we could have done together. Okay, I don't know how you got Not that true. calculation, Not true. but, also, but uh, I'll changed. allow it. <laughs> Okay, now it's my last session in the gym of the week. It's my workout number four, my skill full body session. There's a little bit of strength work, some skill work, quite a lot of core work, some ability. I wanna coin it something. No, I can't coin it anything. It's just really just movements that I wanna work on that I find fun. Do you wanna get any more coordinated or are you good now? I think I'm gonna leave it here. <laughs> Because there's a risk I might take it too far. You're right. You don't want to hit negative returns to coordination. Okay, we don't have to bring economics into it. You're coordinated with that car. <laughs> Can we keep me? <laughs> Anything green, just drive right up next to it. So starting off, I really want to get my one arm press ups back. I used to have them and now I definitely do not have them. So I started off with that. I had a resistance band to help me with the assistance and using a resistance band gives you variable assistance. So right at the bottom of the move, you get the most assistance and that's where the move is at its hardest. So it's appreciated. And then at the top, you get a little bit less assistance. I actually struggled a lot more on my left side, which isn't usually how it goes, but you know, we adjust. You're not coming back up. <laughs> <laughs> I added some extra assistance to really focus on my left side and get four to five nice reps in for three sets. Next up was a half handstand drill. I learned this from my gymnastics coach back in the day and I love it. It's one of my favorite moves and it really forces my shoulders and core to keep things stable, but it's also really engaging my hip flexors and glutes. It's super compound. Now, if you wanna learn these, you could just forget the ball and have your feet flat against the wall so that you're in an L shape and just practice raising each leg off of the wall into a half handstand position. Then I moved on to inverted deadlifts. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, this won't be new to you. You'll have seen me do them and I'm so happy that I get to do them again. This is a calisthenics move and it's basically a drill for a front lever. They really target your core and your lats as you press your hips all the way up to the sky. And I like to do these on rings because it adds a lot of stabilization work, but the best way to start off is between two parallel bars so your hands are in a nice neutral position and they're just stable. Next up, it was time for some legs. I wanted to give my upper body a rest and my legs felt fresh, you know, they were ready to go. So I did a single leg complex on a BOSU ball to really work on my overall lower body mobility, my balance and my ankle strength. When I was younger, and I used to do 100 meter sprint hurdles. My coach used to always drill into us how important it was to have strong ankles. He used to make us run across uneven ground. <laughs> that was the drill. So anytime I do anything that makes me strengthen my ankles, I just think of him. I definitely wouldn't jump straight into these if you've never done them before. I would grab a TRX so that you're assisted and practice that single leg squat variation on a flat ground. You really want to get the mobility and the strength down first and then you can add in the imbalance as the cherry on top. From there I kept it single leg and went into my pistol squat walk drop sets. I call this the super set of death. You'll see what I mean. For these I really like to start with a 10 kilo plate and alternate sides for 10 reps or so. Then I drop down into a 5 kilo plate without rest for another 10 reps and then I go into body weight for another 10 reps and that's roughly 30 total reps, 15 per side. And if I get to a point where I can do more, 
I'll just add more weight because I really don't want to be, you know, I mean, we could be here all day. I then got curious, as we do, and I decided to just see how my muscle ups were progressing. Now, in hindsight, that was a mistake because I'd already done heavy press ups at the start of the session. I'd had an incredible upper body session that week. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but needless to say, I didn't have the strength and I failed super quickly and my form wasn't good. But I don't take it personally. If I really wanna get them, I need to prioritize them, put them at the start of the session, make sure I'm really well rested. I just did a couple of quick failing sets, like literally like two to three heavily assisted reps. And then I just moved on. I like training rotational power because it's valuable in a lot of sports and I went for single leg rotational ball throws. I'm actually really bad at these ones. When you're bad, that's when you need to do it. That's why I'm pushing through. <laughs> but if these are a bit too challenging for you, you can always do standard rotational ball throws, front facing rotational ball throws, half kneeling rotational ball throws. Just the rotational ball throw is just an athlete staple. To finish off, forward kick sits were perfect. I really wanted a faster movement to kind of complement some of the slower stuff I'd done previously in the session. And with this move, I really try and lower my hips and rotate through my torso. And I always press down into the ground with my shoulders. And that was it. That was my workout. You, you guys don't know what I mean. Like it's- It's hard to spot a theme. Yeah. Would be my- It's hard to spot feedback. a theme. You're like, oh, okay, she's doing, Okay, a little bit of like strength work. Okay, okay, okay fine. So now she's balancing. <laughs> okay, how do I? The theme here is out of the box. Anti-establishmentarianism <laughs> workout. Anti-establishment, box defying, <laughs> a plethora of assorted plethora. movements. That's a good word. Word of the day, plethora. That was my workouts for the week. I loved every single session. I went into each of my sessions feeling well rested and there was just a big mix of functional training styles. So it was just really, it was just really enjoyable. And I get asked all the time whether or not I'm using anything to track my workouts, whether I'm using an Apple Watch or a heart rate monitor. I don't use any of that. I personally find that I progress the best when I remove all the noise. I have a really quiet head and I can just focus on exactly how each movement feels and how well I'm recovering. I then took two rest days over the weekend and on the first rest day, I wanted to go roller skating with my cousin. I've been begging her to come roller skating with me for weeks, but you know, the schedules didn't quite align and it was amazing. We went for about 30 to 45 minutes and it was just super chill around the park. To be honest, I just needed to get outside because I'd spent so much of the day inside with my head down. So we just wanted to feel good. And even to be honest, calling it a workout is a bit of a stretch because it was so light, <laughs> but I just wanted to give you guys a feel for all of the movement that I did in this week. That's my week of workouts. I feel like it would be really cool to do these kinds of videos often. So if there's something you want me to focus more on, then just let me know in the comments section. And again, like I said before, your workouts should be working for you. As long as you're happy, as long as you're loving your training, then you're already killing it. <laughs> and I'm just here just to say hi and spend time with you. So thank you so much. Please give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button with the little notification bell to join our incredible family. And I will see you guys very soon. I love ya. Bye.